and she bought this car, I remember. I was half cut and I was on a Peugeot launch and I'd worked out, I'd worked out that the, I had a Blackberry at the time, I'd worked out that the auction ended mid-dinner. So I made an excuse that I needed the toilet, ran up to my hotel room, which had a good connection, had my laptop, and I bid on it and won it mid-dinner at a Peugeot launch in, I think it was France. And then you just went back downstairs. And then I went like back downstairs. King of with the, the world. With the, or did yeah, you go the, back downstairs and go, oh hell, what have I done? No, I was prepped for this. You one. Were, this is this was the This was the two grail. years in the making. Ah, what a lovely day for a drive in a muscle car. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A mule. A mule a mule car. This car mule. This is the first time I've been in your charger. Yeah, I mean I've had it a long time now. Uh, I've had it. 12 years. Have you? Yeah, in fact, we're in May now, aren't we? Yeah. I bought it in May of 2008. Did you import this from the Americas or how, was it already here? No, I imported it personally from Americas. I bought it privately and I bought it just as America had gone into recession. Uh huh. And, and we hadn't. Oh, so I tried timing. to be I tried to be canny with my financial decision. I've been looking for ages for the right car. I wanted something I wanted something patinated and um, it's, I, I wasn't specifically looking for this spec. Okay, talk me through the spec because I don't really know how these things work. Well, if you What motor is it? It is a 383 cubic inch, so that's a 6.3 litre. Yeah. It's Not the, the Hemi. Not a Hemi, it's the smallest of the big blocks. Okay. So the big blocks comprised of 383, then 440, um, with different carburetor packages, and then the, the 426 Hemi. So the, oh, four, okay. the 426 is a smaller capacity to the 440, but the Hemi was a, a down tune race engine. So there right. were street Hemis, there were race Hemis, but the Hemi is the hallowed car yeah. engine. Although is not, it too not, hallowed? Because I don't know anything about muscle cars really, and I was thinking, like Hemi, and I go, "Oh, that's good then, right?" But is it actually the it's, case? Or? It's very revvy, and ah. um, you know, 425 horsepower. You don't want a revvy American V8, though, do you? Well, I, I personally, and I know a few guys in the club, the Mopar Muscle Club, who are really good, <laughs> who have helped me, and I'm, one of them has been instrumental in this new carb I've just put on, but. One guy in particular, Pete Wiseman, has owned Hemi's, non-Hemi's, 446 four packs, the whole shebang. And he still says, uh, on the street, a well set up 440 will outgun a 426 Hemi. Oh, okay. And when I say well set up, I don't mean like lunatic spec that is nothing like the factory. I mean just well set up, 446 pack. Yeah. So that's three double choke carbs. Yeah. That's the that's the eco model, right? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the yeah. And you've got four on the floor here as well. I have four on the floor. Yeah, which okay. makes this is one of two hundred and fifty nine apparently this particular spec. So the spec is three. and it's original, is it? This yeah, is the this, engine it came with, box everything. This like is that, numbers so. matching, as they say. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is this is yeah. Always, uh, always no. nice. It's easy to forget because they. Particularly in this country, there, there's there's something exotic about them because they're unusual. Yeah. And we only associate them really, I suppose, with we saw them on television and in movies. Yeah. But these were everyday cars for the, the, this, American people in the 60s, late 60s and early 70s. Well, I'm guessing this kind of car would be your Ford Focus ST? Maybe. Yeah. Even. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to sort of... Like in, in the... This was 50, yeah, this was 50 last year, so this is 51 years old. Oh my god, this car's 50 as this well. It's like it's sort of it's half hard a century to, old. Hard to comprehend because apart from anything else, I do think it's a it's a it's a very elegant shape. Oh gosh, it's, it's for me, the 68 charger and the, and the 69 and 70 as well, which is the same silhouette. Yeah. The the the, the haunches, the, the front and the back are to die for. You'll always argue with people about which is the greatest muscle car shape. Yeah. But uh, for me, it's the eyeless, sinister face. Yes. The uh, the back haunch, the front haunch. This car looks amazing from the looking from the top down. If you park it out on the drive and look down from upstairs at it, it's yeah. got this amazing um, hips at the front and the back. Yeah. It's great. 
And I like some of the details, like the little indents in the doors that are sort of reminiscent oh, yeah. of outlets, but they're not. They haven't gone full fake. No. It's just almost like they just did something to make it a bit more interesting to break up the yeah. sheet metal of the oh, flanks. There's, there's some amazing shapes in this car. And I got this car in the country the week, or about three days it arrived at the docks before I got married. So right. I took it to my wedding <laughs> on a trailer. I was said oh, this to you yes. before. This was the car on the trailer. This was the car, my wedding car, that was static, non-running, and um, and, I've, and I can't see myself ever getting rid. And I've, I've um, so this is the this is the forever car. Well, it kind of is. I've got two forever cars, really. This and my first car, the Bug. But this is this is a really contrary to belief. This is a really good driver's car. Okay. It's, a, it's really, it's not as soft as people think suspension wise. Right. Um, yes, it, and it's a manual, and the manuals are a lot better than people realise. You'll, I'll let you have a go later if you want. You can feel it. And um, is that steering wheel actually on? It's not on the right way. Yeah, it's I was going to ask. It's not yeah. a very avant-garde design. It's <laughs> just on wrong. That's the. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's just not on right. Okay. So I need. I had, I had the wheels aligned, and I. Didn't do wow, it. how out of alignment were they well, for the steering wheel? This is when we, like I've that. had it like this for quite some time. I just can't be... I'm just a bit lazy with certain jobs, but that job I I've, I've need to sort out because it annoys me. And it, it might annoy you after about 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird. But uh, it's all part of the uh, this, is, this is a car I, I use. It's been extensively restored, but I've tried to disguise it to match the, the, the patina because it has a pleasant patina to it. I bought the car from San Diego and imported it from Diego. Ah, and I was going to ask where, where it was from because uh, that, that's always a thing, isn't it, with old American cars? California car. California car. Which I always think needs to be more specific because what if it's Northern California? Well. What if it's San Francisco? It's really damp there. Well, guess where this was supplied new? San Francisco. Francisco. Was it? Yep. This, ah. spent, this spent up until uh, I think the, the 90s. Yeah. This lived in Cisco. So, ah. so this somebody bought this brand new the mm -hmm. year Bullet came out. Okay. And drove it around San Diego with a three pedal. San Diego with, or San sorry, Francisco? Not, sorry, Cisco. Right. With, with non servo drums. Okay, it's hilly, isn't it? With no That's power it. steering. And Break narrow. fade, anybody? Well, just, just general manoeuvring. Because San Francisco hasn't sort of got smaller in the last. 50 years and I've been there not that long ago and you know it's a it's a for an American city yeah it's got a lot of narrow streets relatively I suppose but maybe just keep away from them I think I like to think that this car was um, owned by someone who was a bit handy a bit handy with the pedals oh I see not a bit right yeah I don't mean the street fighter no Although they could <laughs> yeah, have been. Like, <laughs> notorious pub thug yeah or uh, yeah well so, so it did have a, a damp early life. Yeah, and it was in a carport for a lot of it, and the, and the car couldn't fully fit in the carport. Oh. So from about there, back, so about where the top of the rear window is, backwards, yeah. it was completely rotten. Really? Completely. Just from having rain on it? Having rain going but on, the, the, and it's a common problem wow. on these, because it's a monocoque. Yes. Unusually so for the time, wasn't yeah, it? That yeah, yeah. So, monocoque when they were mostly still body on frame in yeah, Detroit. Tr Chrysler was quite pioneering with the old monocoques. Monocoques, and um, so it was cheaper to make, and it, and maybe that's why it actually handles better than people re remember. So with the back end's been rebuilt, where it needed to be painted, we, we actually scanned in the, the bad repaint in bronzy brown. The original paint is underneath, which is like a light bullet. I like. A light green. Oh, really? So the original car is light green, the engine yeah. bay is still light green and the boot's still light green. Yeah. Um, and somebody didn't key up the paintwork, just did a cheap job in the I think the late seventies to make it more on more fashionable, bronzy <laughs> brown. And I've just I just liked it. So we actually painted it there again. It, we painted the back end in places green and then went over it with the bronze brown. No. And so it's had a lot of work at the back end and then it, it had no oil pressure when we got it, so the original engine was rebuilt by my friend out in the fence, Ricky. Ricky White, great guy. And um, to pretty much standard spec, 
electronic ignition and um, I've now just recently awarded it with a Holly double pumper carb and an Edelbrock performer inlet manifold so it's I guess it's a little bit a little bit hotter than it would have been as standard but not not much at all probably not that noticeable but the thing about this car is, is ever since I've rebuilt it and got it on the road it's been so reliable really it's been so reliable rich I've done I haven't done loads of miles in it but I, it's, it's always got my back and the, these are the two run-in gauges that we put in so we definitely knew that it wasn't boiling over and we definitely knew the oil pressure was kosher and um, whoa sorry I'm doing that thing that people do in left-hand drive cars of leaning into the seat. well this is I'm trying to hug the, the it's verge. quite wide isn't it yeah, I, if I had an observation it's, um, quite, it's quite wide yeah that's the other thing I I'm always amazed in the US if you ever drive a big car now in the US like you know a big SUV yeah that there are a lot of places where in fact it is quite hard to, to put it like park it in space and things like that and I don't know whether they've repainted the lines to accommodate the fact that cars in the US have got smaller oh. or if in fact everybody just had a nightmare back in the 60s and 70s because the average car I mean would this have oh. counted as a full-size car or would they still call this like a mid-size I That's don't really, really know in the 68 I reckon this was mid-size I don't think it was full-size because in the, in the same era, you could have bought the Chrysler 300C and the is it the Chrysler New Yorker, right? And the Dodge Monaco, and I think they were all bigger. So, and this isn't like Lincoln Town Car size. No, it's not Impala size. And Impala's bigger than this. It's got bigger overhangs. But it's uh, it's big though. It is a big car. It's big for and one of the reasons why I love it is because in over here in Britain, like on a day like today, it's just pure ridiculous escapism. Well, it's very much a windows down sort of car, isn't it? Well, that's, that's why we, you've got to celebrate the pillarness. Because of the pillarnessness. You've, you've got to celebrate the pillarnessness. Pillarnessness and the. But yeah, but also just because it's a sort of joyful car. There's oh, something man. quite joyful about it and, 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 and adds the joy having. Um, people love it. I having a bit people, of fresh air. Some people are scared of it, but most people really love it. My kids love it. Do they? Yeah, they've always loved it. But they've always known it because. I had it before both of them. So. Ah. In fact, I had a there was a little conversation with my son yesterday where he was looking at my collection of die-cast models in my office and he said, Daddy, um, where are these going when you die? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well... I said, oh yeah, you're getting, you're getting old and wise already. I said, well, I'll probably, before I die, Probably, if you're interested, you'll probably end up having a few. And he said, "What about the real cars?" I said, "Well, kind of the same. If you're interested, I'd like to be able to keep them in the family. So, I, I, I think my daughter will have the Beetle, and my son will probably have this, or they'll share the pair of them. I don't limit now. I'm saying all this like well, I'm this so guy's old. coming in hot here, with bouncing <laughs> around on the verge. <laughs> He was not slowing down. Yeah, we are going out into Fenland roads, and there is. Yeah, it sort of feels right with this car, though, doesn't it? It's a big skies kind of car. That uh... I f I, it was embarrassing because when I just filled up with gasoline, yeah, I actually said to the bloke uh, behind the counter, I said, "Have a nice day." <laughs> I've, I've never, I haven't said that. I don't think ever. Now. Oh, oh, there's one thing I know about this car. I was going to say, design-wise, yeah. The back window it has slight uh, buttresses along the side. The back window is slightly inset, and then it has these raised bits either side, strakes almost, if you will. Strakes. Absolutely. And now I remember reading that they thought that that would make it aerodynamically more efficient because this was always going to be a racing car. For NASCAR. For NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only when. They did this based on a kind of back of a cigarette packet calculation <laughs> rather than using a wind tunnel. And when they got it on the track, they realised, in fact, if anything, it was making things worse. <laughs> and the racing cars ended up with a back window that sits it was flush, flush. Yeah, with the, those bits. Which is the Charger 500, I yes. think. And then you had, of course, the, the, the Daytona, the Dodge Daytona, the Plymouth Super B, which are the winged yes. cars. And they're like the Capri 280 Brooklands. They're, they're insanely valuable now. They're insanely valuable, but but back when they were new, they couldn't sell them. 
Oh, really? Nobody really wanted them. And the same with the Capri t- Brookens, because the Capri was old by then, wasn't it? Yeah. And, they, and it's weird how they, yeah, the winged cars, as they call them, the winged cars are, you know, telephone numbers now. So, yeah, this is... Um, it's loping along, isn't it? Well, it I can loops do along 25 mile an hour in fourth. But what, what are we doing now? Yeah, we're doing 25 miles an hour. I'll put it in fourth, but, and I just... There's no problem for it. I mean, it's, it's got just, that lovely. Is this which, what have we got the exhaust in now? Noisy or quiet? This is actually in quiet. This is like sensible. I care about my neighbours mode. There's a police car coming up. Funny enough, so if I put it on, <laughs> I've got it on the remote. Yeah. I press number two. Is that number two? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it makes a bit of a difference. <laughs> Solenoid. Do openings. that again. Oh. It's yeah. quite quite racy sounding now. It's and that's standard ex- exhaust manifolds. Yeah. And then the, from so the manifolds back. That's all on back your back pipes. Just, and it was designed for this car. It was bespoke using. Bespoke. Using the the, the silencer boxes are designed and made. All of it's made in Britain and designed in Britain. Wow. By a company called Wartech. Oh. Who you might have heard of. I have. They made some pipes that I had put on my VXR8. Ah yes. Yes, which made it very slightly fruitier, but not much. Now the idle. I'm, I'm liking it now uh, even more. Listen to it. It's just it's, it's, it's a little bit more potato. Filthy. Yeah, still got that sort of nice wet yeah. lumpiness. It to is. It. Lo- it is wet. Wet potatoes. <laughs> you know when you, you know when you. Oh, it's heady as get. I'm getting a, a headiness again. Yeah, you don't want to hang around it too much. Oh. Uh, it's not uh, environmentally responsible. Well, yeah, but we've talked about this before. For the amount you drive it, you're not doing a massive amount of damage because you don't use it that much. But I, I really don't. Oh my lord! It's a thug. It is it a just thug. It feels quite thuggy when you do that. It's like that's, rah! that's why I love it because you can just potter around with it in fourth at 25, 30 miles an hour, or you can ring it right out. I want it to be authentic. I bought this car for the full driving experience. I like driving it. We're doing Is that so- really how fast we're going? Yeah. All oh, right. That's accurate. I mended oh. it. I mended it recently. I put new faces on the dials because all the dials were burnt. Right. The speedo was burnt to the point where I had to put stickers on it. Use my phone to calibrate it, and it wasn't wasn't ideal really. But um, um, I like that was very effortless the way it just sort of gurgled its way up oh. to. 75 70 though. miles an hour. That's yeah, and I didn't ring it out. No. I didn't ring it out at it's all. It's just, it's... It's, I mean, like I said, it's not even... It's got a set of lungs on it. Yeah, you can, like, get up... What, what's this? Third at... Third at 2,800. That's it. Oh! See, it's fine. 70's not a problem, the gearing's pretty good. It appears to be tracking in a straight line, which is, is I think, is, you know, uh, not necessarily, I would have taken as a given, but well, here I've, we are. I've really gone through the suspension, the brakes, the steering of this car. When, when it was redone, it took nine months to get on the road. The bodywork, new glass, new interior, because the interior was just destroyed. Oh, right, so this is all... This is a reproduction interior. I've got the original seat covers, but they're not very good. Being yeah. in this car, is huh? like, being in this car, it's like it's like going to a rodeo or something. It's like it's a completely different experience to everything I'm used to. Yeah. I was going to say I've never owned an American car, and then I realised that I have. I've had a Jeep Cherokee. You have had a Jeep an Cherokee. An XJ, yeah. It was uh, four liter. It's a good car, that. I mean, yeah. it was you know on its last legs, but I liked it. It had yeah. a lot of a lot of spirit to it. You've got to take American cars for what they are. Most of the time, you're, you're buying. You're like, I, I, I bought a '68. Char- I wanted a '68 Charger because I prefer the '68 backlights to the '69, and I love the, the bullet thing. I noticed a nice detail on those backlights. The round lights, and they've got sort of rifling around the outside. And yeah, it's a really have. nice detail. You just yeah. go. It is. In fact, that styling thing, though, I think they just put the work into making them. Uh, there's loads of jewel-like features on what is a mass-produced cheap car. Yeah. 
like the fuel filler flap, it weighs so much. It's, like an, that, yeah. it's like an old glass Creamy. ashtray from a pub. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it really has a weight to it. And um, the other thing I like about this is it's not too pretty and immaculate that I'm scared to park it. No. Uh, although uh, if I, I, don't, I very rarely leave it outside overnight, I would chain it to, my, to a tree. And I do have a wheel clamp, and I do, I do genuinely. I'm sorry. Well, your security feature for this car is to chain it to a tree. I've got some boat chain, and I chain it, I chain it around the axle to a tree if I leave it out, and I, I have a That's wheel clamp. That's the most redneck theft solution I... I've ever heard. <laughs> you chain it to so a tree. I do chain oh it to a tree. Oh, my Lord. I'm a bit... Short of locking a cougar inside of it. That is... Oh, what, you mean man. a woman of a certain age who's got a bit of a thirst? <laughs> the other sort. Okay. Although, you know, maybe. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, and it's not been stolen, so... I love the fact know. that I don't, I genuinely don't, I don't polish it. I, um, I wipe it down with uh, WD-40. Of course you do. And it has a very distinct smell, this car, which when I get out of it, my, and I go into the house or I, I meet my wife, she'll say to me, you stink when you get out of that Dodge. It's a smell of wax oil, and um, yeah, so cavity wax, unleaded, and soot, I suppose. <laughs> That's the smell soot. of desire, my lady. There's three destroyed caravans in that field. God, it's almost like... One had been crashed into the other one. Strange thing. I think there's a town down there as well, or a village that I just saw a sign for, called Podhole as well. Podhole? Podhole. Oh, it got me right in the Podhole. <laughs> so, so How often do you actually use this, then? That's a good question. Um, on a good, like last year, which is its 50th year, I used it more than I've ever used it. I reckon I probably did 3,000 miles that year. Okay. Um, I will do between 1,000 and 2,000 miles a year in it. And um, what do you really? use it for? Like you're not I going use to it to go. Shops. I, yeah, I, I sometimes just get it out on, on over a weekend or a weekday like this when I'm. When I've got time, I'll do the school run in it. Really? Yeah, I'll do the school right, run in it, cool. and I'll um, just take it out for a bit of a run. I'll go to a show in it that's an interesting show, not not an American car show. Usually, it's just a general show. Yeah. I get it out depending on the weather. I get it out April, put it away, October. Okay. And um. But that's the thing. Again, windows down. It feels it's perfect on a day like today. Oh man, it's lovely. You yeah. need the windows down and, the, and the, the blue sky and everything's right with the world. So here's my question to you. Why, why do you like American cars so much? Old American cars. Yeah. It's the ridiculousness of the proportions and the, the outrageousness of the style that are ill-suited to almost everything. <laughs> Well, I notice a lot of car designers love American cars of the probably 50s, 50s to 70s, yeah. maybe maybe 70s, and they start to get watered down. Yeah. That, and I always thought that it's kind of it's the exuberance, isn't it? It's the yeah. kind of carefree. Oh, I mean, in the in the late 50s, when it all with the Harley Earl Cadillac stuff, it it was all the space age. You basically had a blank sheet of paper and just went, just draw the maddest yeah. thing. You know, you were, it was like a knight in shining armour type of thing. Of It had a function, and underneath they were all truck, lightweight truck chassis. You were just clothing them in the maddest stuff you could, and I, I love it. And I think the reason why I always wanted an American car was the cliche of seeing the films, wanting something that was a bit out of there. And I like living in a place, in a, you know, a quaint part of England, which is just so uh, at odds with this. Yeah, and yet, as we're out here on the fence, this feels like the right kind of place for this car. So long, straight roads, big skies. Yeah. Lots of inbreeding. No it's hidden the hedges. Perfect, yeah. And perfect I don't place. live in the fence, just so you know. No, I know. <laughs> but you live nearby. I live near it. Easy access to the kind, easy of, access. kind of terrain that seems to suit this car. We could, if you were driving on the other side of the road, we could just, if you squint, be sort of in some part of Georgia. Oh, yeah, you could. I, I like the way it rides as well, it just sort of... I think it's a good drive. I really do, and I'm not just saying this because it's my own car. No, it rides, when we, when, it rides when, nicely. It's not crashy and it's not, it doesn't no. feel too loose. No, like... 
I am you, surprised. If you kind of weird, I mean, this road's particularly challenging. It's got yeah. a funny old. It doesn't have as much roll as. Um, mo I mean, I've owned a few other American cars, way more rolling poly than this, way more. And this these are torsion. The stock. It's torsion bars. It's got torsion bars, suspension, so uh, torsion at the front, leaves at the back. So I've got brand new torsion bars at the front, so I did replace them, and new Hemi leaves at the back. The Hemi had an extra leaf in it ah. to cope with the torque, so it means it rides a little bit st uh, stiffer. A little right. bit. And I, stiff is not the right word. Uh, supple? I don't know what you'd use. I would, I'd go so far as to say the ride is, is, is supple and comfortable. Yeah, it is. It nice. suits the car because there's a sort of languid quality to it that we're just sort of, we're just loping along. Yeah. And that's just the thing. Just two guys you, up to no good. 